Hi everyone, this is Kate Warnock here with Guidewell President Dr. Renee Lehrer. Renee, welcome. Thank you. Nice to be here. We're happy to have you. So Renee, you know, this morning you opened up for Patrick Kennedy, one of our keynotes here at Emerging Minds, and you referenced the number of roles that you yourself have had in the mental health experience. Can you maybe recap that for us? So, you know, I've been in healthcare for 30 plus years, started as a practicing internist, and then somehow got lost and ended up in the healthcare world and then moved into the behavioral health world. And what you find is with all those experiences and all the knowledge about that I've all the knowledge I've learned about healthcare and about mental health, you don't understand it until it hits you. As much as you learn, as much as you want to understand, particularly in mental health, when someone you know or someone you love or you yourself has a problem and you begin to see what life really is like, it's one thing to read it, it's another thing to be in the movie. And and unfortunately, I've had that experience and with a family member, and it's a life-changing event. And it makes you so much more aware of how the system works or doesn't work, and it really positions you to be a much stronger advocate going forward. Which is why we're so fortunate to have you in the role that you are no, here at you. Guidewell. So, um, Renee, too, we know that there are so many barriers to care. What would you say is probably the largest barrier that we need to overcome as when it comes to mental health? So there are several. Number one is stigma. Number one, people need to acknowledge that they have a problem when they have one, or the people around them need to be supportive enough to show them that they have a problem and be willing to get treatment and be willing to understand the implications of their challenges and also to really understand that mental illness is no different than physical illness, that there is something wrong in your body. There's a chemical imbalance. There is something just like if you had a heart attack or diabetes or cancer. So you have to be willing to accept that mental illness is an illness. You know, we heard Patrick Kennedy talk today. Parity means illnesses are illnesses. You don't distinguish there are good ones and there are bad ones. Or that you make a decision to have a mental illness. You don't. It's who you are and what happens to you. So number one is to accept that stigma. Number two is to understand how to find help and where to get help and make sure that the help meets your need. And it's not a cold. You don't get better two days later, but it's ongoing and it's constant and it's constantly updating and renewing what you're doing. So today, what we really have to focus on is awareness, acceptance, stigma, and access. Absolutely. So another question, uh, you know, in conversation that's come up so much more, we're learning more about the co-occurrence of physical ailments associated with mental illness. How do we better make that connection so that people understand you really can't separate your brain from the rest of your body? So, so think about two, ho two cohorts of patients. There are people whose primary illness is mental illness. Those people generally have a severe mental illness and it's quite debilitating. But that's a small percentage of the population. There's a larger percentage of the population that has medical challenges. And those medical challenges are often accompanied by a comorbid condition of mental health challenges. So we know, for example, that someone who's had a heart attack, the likelihood that they will have a second heart attack is much higher if they're depressed or anxious or challenged with acceptance of their illness. <coughs> we, we know if someone's diabetic that the incidence of admissions for diabetics is much higher for people who are depressed. If someone gets diagnosed with cancer, not a pleasant experience. Ha your ability to improve is based on medical treatment, but also the social and psychological treatment. How do you deal with this illness? What's your attitude? All of those things make a difference. So the ability to get primary care doctors or specialists to be aware of a medical illness generally has other consequences. Be aware of them, look for help, Go a little slower. Sometimes that's hard. Spend a little time understanding why someone is doing what they're doing or not doing. Why is that patient not going to cardiac rehab? Why are they not taking their meds? Why are they not following their diet? There's generally a reason. And the first answer you get is probably not the reason. But if they tr you're trusted and you're a trusted advisor, having that interaction and that trust, people open up. Terrific. And that's important. All right, so Renee, one last question for you. Why, what does Guidewell hope to get from Emerging Minds, this kind of event? So we need to learn. We need to learn from experts who have views on life that are different from ours. We need to see the total experience. And we really need to understand what are the new methods out there? How do we get past these notions of stigma and acceptance and, and, and access? How do we make those things happen? We don't have the corner on knowledge. There's a lot of people out there who understand this from very different perspectives than we do. The opportunity to bring all those stakeholders together to learn, that's our goal. 
Terrific. Well, Renee, thank you so much for sharing your insights with us here. Thank this you. This is Kate Warnock. Thank you so much for watching.